fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. All right, Charlie, you can go home now. Thanks. Don't thank me, thank your mother. She put up bail. Wait a minute, son. I want to talk to you. Yeah. What's happened to you, Charlie? A few months ago, you were head of your class in school. Well liked and respected. A boy everybody was proud of. And now look at you. Maybe I've learned a few things. You've forgotten a few things, too, son. What about your mother? You were just a homeless Indian kid when Mrs. Judd took you in. She gave you a good home and a fine education. Even adopted you legally. You know, folks expected a lot from you. Folks expected too much. Well, they certainly didn't expect you to turn out to be a petty thief. Instead of wasting your time on me, why don't you go after somebody like Bart Walton? I'd go after Walton if I had any evidence. That's one way of saying he's too smart for you. All right, that's enough. Go ahead. Go on. Go on. Charlie. Come on. Charlie, why did you do it? Please, Ma, I don't want to talk about it. Well, I want to talk about it. Son, if you needed money, why didn't you tell me? Not here, Ma. Wait till we get home. All right, son. He's free to go now, isn't he, Jim? Yes, Mary. I hope you can talk some sense into him. Don't worry about us. Good night, Jim, and thanks. The ungrateful whelp, he ought to be horsewhipped. Bart Walton's the one that should be horsewhipped. Charlie was a good kid until he met up with that crook. Well, Bart's a bad influence, all right. He's worse than that. He's behind every crime in this county. Yet I can't lay a finger on him. He'll slip up someday. When? He outguesses us at every turn. And then struts around town, corrupting young kids like Charlie. All because the law says we can't jail a man without evidence. You going home? Yeah. I'm fed up. The Judd kid got into trouble again. Now, these amateurs never learned. What did you find out about the bank's money shipment? Well, they're not going to ship until they get more guards. We'll have to knock off the bank itself. We don't have enough men for a bank job. Now, Charlie, Judd's been begging you to cut him in on something, hasn't he? Yeah, he's just a kid. Yeah, but he's a darn smart one. All right, boss, it's your show. Now, listen. Tomorrow night, the moon sets at 2 o'clock. Leave your horses in back of the bank. Me hear bad news, Kimasami. Bad news? Ah, uh, me hear talk about Indian boy Charlie Judd. That's an odd name for an Indian. A uh, white lady named Mrs. Judd bring him up, make him her son. And she adopted him. Ah, uh, her send boy to school, him learn much. Indian people proud, think someday maybe him speak in a white man's council. An educated man who understands both white men and Indians could do much to help the West. Mm, but him not help anybody, him no good. What do you mean? Men in town say him lie, steal, and go around with crooks. If that's true, Tonto, he'd stir up resentment against your people, discourage further efforts to educate Indian children. Where does he live? Box Creek. We go there? Yes, we must try to straighten Charlie out. Fuse is all set, Bart. Good. Are you feeling nervous, kid? Why should I? You fellas seem to know what you're doing. Seems how this is your first job, we're going to let you light the fuse. I don't mind. Get behind the desk, Steve. Then I'm going to leave here. We split up. I'll meet you in four hours at Hangman's Stump and take you to the hideout. Right. Are you ready? Yeah. Get down before you get your head blown off. I want you to see that I'm not afraid. Get down, you idiot. It'll blow you to kingdom come.
Where have you been, Charlie? I, uh, I, I had some business to attend to. I want the truth, Charlie. What have you been up to? Nothing, Ma. Everything's all right. What's in that blanket? Some of my things. Your things? Yes, Ma. I have to go away for a while. What have you done? Nothing I'm ashamed of. You're joining up with Bart Walton, aren't you? Well, leave me alone, Ma. I know what I'm doing. But Walton's a crook. Charlie, I've never bothered you before or interfered. But please, please don't do this. I'm sorry, Ma. I need you here on the farm. I won't be gone long. Oh, please, Ma, try to understand and try to trust me. I'm afraid you're asking a little too much. It's hard to say this, son, but I must have failed in some way or you wouldn't be doing this. It's not your fault, Ma. I love you, son, as though you were my own flesh and blood. But I... I have to do what I think is right. I know, Ma. If you join Bart Walton's gang, you're no longer welcome in this house. Goodbye, son. Walton's a crook the law's been trying to trap for a long time. We stop, boy, before he can get away? No, I want to talk to Mrs. Judd. You follow Charlie and see if he meets Walton. Uh -huh. Me leave trail for you. Good. Mrs. Judd. If you're one of Bart Walton's men, Charlie's already gone. I'm no friend of Walton's. I'd like to help you. I don't need help from your kind. I'm no outlaw, Mrs. Judd, and I hope to prevent Charlie from becoming one. Who are you, and why are you interested in my boy? The education and opportunities that you gave Charlie have made him a symbol for the future of his race. If he becomes a criminal, he'll discredit his people and provoke racial intolerance. You're too late. Charlie's already gone. I know. Did he say where he was going? No. How long has he known Bart Walton? I'm not sure. The boy began changing about a month ago. In just what way did he change? He became moody. He started talking about the number of crimes committed and the few criminals who were caught. He began staying out late. That's when I discovered he was meeting Bart Walton and other no accounts. Two nights ago, he was arrested trying to rob a store. That's a tragic and familiar story, Mrs. Judd. But he was a good boy. He changed so quickly, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't... He's coming back. It's Joe Blake, the deputy sheriff. The rest of my life, every time somebody rides in, I'll be hoping it's Charlie. I'd rather not answer any questions about my mask. May I step into the next room? I don't know why, but for some reason, I trust you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mrs. Judd. Howdy, Mrs. Judd. Charlie around? No, he's left town. Do you know where he went? No. Is anything wrong? The three men robbed the bank early this morning. Oh, no. The sheriff and a posse are out looking for him now. We're... Were any of the men recognized? Well, it was dark, but Tom Zeller thinks Charlie was one of them. But that's impossible. Charlie didn't leave the house until an hour ago. Oh, I see. Well, I... I guess Tom was mistaken. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mrs. Judd. Not at all. didn't tell the truth, Mrs. Judd. I had to protect my son. You're not protecting him. You're just making it easier for him to commit further crimes. You'd better see the sheriff and tell him the truth. Where are you going? To find Charlie and the Walton gang. Oh, no. I have no choice, Mrs. Judd.
Put your hands up. Get down. All right, come over here. All right, turn around. I don't know who you are or why you're following me, but I'm not going to waste time trying to find out. What you do? I'm going to tie you up. Get over there. I almost didn't make it, Sheriff. An Indian on a paint was following me. Following you? You think Bart's suspicious? I'll have to take that chance. Who else is in the gang besides Bart? Uh, Steve Kramer is the only one I've seen. But I'm almost sure Bart's getting his tips from somebody in town. That would explain a lot. Yeah, I can't ask too many questions or they'll suspect me. Now that you're in the gang, how are we going to keep in touch with each other? Well, uh, there are hideouts near Hangman Stump. I'll leave notes for you there. Anything else? Uh, you heard about last night's job. Yeah, Tom Zeller said he thought he recognized you, so I had to send Blake out and question your mother. Oh, no. Now, look, Sheriff, we've got to tell her we're breaking her heart. Charlie, when you came to me with this scheme, I told you I'd agreed to it only on one condition, that it's kept an absolute secret. I haven't even told Blake. You should have seen her this morning. I almost broke down and told her. It'll only be a few more days. Just as soon as you find out where they hid the money for the rest of their robberies, I'll arrest the whole bunch. All right, Sheriff. Well, I better get going. Good luck. in a trap. Charlie? Uh, him smart, but him bad medicine chemist, I mean. Well, at least he's not a killer. What you learned from Mrs. Judd? Three men robbed the bank last night. Judging from the evidence, one of them was Charlie. Well, that's why he ran away. Yes. I'm counting on him to lead us to the rest of the gang. Come on. Where you been? I had a little trouble getting away from the house. You got to learn to be on time if we're going to get along. Sure, Bart. Where's the hideout? Come on, I'll show you. was here first. Someone must have waited for Charlie inside the shack. Tracks lead away in different directions. Looks like Charlie's friend headed back to town. Him get red clay on boots here, Kimisami. Charlie's seen you, Tonto, so I'll follow him from now on. You go after his friend with the clay on his boots. I want to know who he is. Did you get rid of the money all right, Bart? Yeah. You mean the money's not here? No. The boss takes care of it for us. You talk too much, Steve. Wait a minute. Aren't you bossing this outfit? I am as far as you're concerned. Let it go at that. Sorry. You owe me a hand. Sure. Play poker, kid? Afraid not. If you don't mind, I'd like to look around a bit. Help yourself. Be back in time to rustle up some grub. Right. You better tell him, Steve. He's been asking too many questions. Well, every greenhorn asks questions. I know, but I'm not taking any chances. Go on. All right. Mr. Reach, give me that paper and don't try any tricks. Now turn around. 
Drop your guns. To the sheriff, huh? Well, that dirty double crossing polecat. All right, turn around and start walking. And be careful, because I ain't a bit particular about who I shoot. All right, move. Vanished in a thin air. Hey, an Indian on a paint just rode up. He's fooling around with your horse. What if he is? I doubt it. An Indian on a paint? Yeah. Come on. All right, Injun, what are you doing? Me not do anything. Yeah, I know. Get in the office. You're going to answer a few questions. Come on. All right, Injun, start talking. Did Walton pay you to keep an eye on Charlie Judd? Charlie? Come on, speak up. Me not know, Walton. You'll have to do better than that. You followed Charlie. You picked up my trail at the cabin and you followed me here, didn't you? Why you meet crook like Charlie? I'm just about fed up with you, Injun. I'll be back. I have to see Mrs. Deal about that fight at her place last night. All right, by the time you get back, I'll have this Injun talking. So you were double-crossing us. You know what we do to double-crossers and their pals. He's no pal of mine. I never saw him before today. You expect me to believe that? Since when do masked men work for the law? If you wasn't in on the scheme, how'd you know where to find this letter? I saw him hide it. Naturally, I was curious. Why were you hanging around? If you're Bart Walton, I was looking for you. Yeah? I hear you run a successful outfit. If you need another gun hand, I might be interested. All right, mister. I'll give you a chance to prove you're on the level. That's all I ask. If you're an outlaw, you ought to hate double crossers as much as we do. Suppose you take care of this one. Well, what do you mean? Shoot him. Shoot a defenseless man? It's the only way you'll convince me you two ain't in cahoots. All right. Give me one of my guns. Wait. Let me have it. You proved yourself I'm going on to let you have one bullet. One's enough. One ain't going to do you much good against the two of us. Isa Dorat. Isai Sakwadase. Neti. What are you trying to pull? I only told him to prepare to die. Wasate. Boss, Bart. Yeah. Joe Blake. What's going on here? We found out Charlie's been working with the sheriff. And that's what I came to tell you. Who's this man? Uh, that's an hombre who wants to join the gang. He's going to take care of Charlie to prove he's on the level. Well, let's have a look at him. Take off your mask. Seeing my face won't prove anything. Suppose we finish this job first. All right. Hurry up. Nice shooting, mister. I'd better shoot him again to make sure. Good idea. Well, there was only one bullet in this gun. If you don't mind, Bart. Sure. I gotta admit you're all right. Thanks. Get your hands up, all of you. Why are you... I wouldn't advise you to try it. All right, Charlie, get up and take their guns. Why, well, you... well, you didn't shoot him. Of course I didn't. If you crooks understood the Indian language, you'd know he said he'd shoot past me and for me to fall as if I'd taken a bullet to the heart. I'll get even with you if it's the last thing I do. Considering where you're going, that's rather an empty threat. Get some rope, Charlie. We'll tie them up. Well, there it is. Every cent they ever took, right here in the strong box that we found over at Blake's house. You must have been afraid to spend it for fear you'd arouse suspicion. Uh, there's a big reward coming to both of you. The reward belongs to Charlie. If it hadn't been for you, the whole plan would have failed. I don't want money, Charlie. I just want you to be a credit to your people. A man who'll make the West a finer place. I'll certainly try. Do you want to... Charlie. Ma. Your Indian friend told me everything. Oh, Charlie, I'm so proud of you. No, Ma, there's nothing to cry about. I know it's foolish, but I just can't help it. Son, will you ever forgive me for all the things I said? Of course, Ma. And I'll never hide anything from you again. Say, I want you to meet... Oh, uh, he asked me to say goodbye to both of you. But I don't even know who he is. I didn't either at first, but you should have guessed when he refused the reward. He's a man that's become a legend, Charlie. 
he's the lone ranger